Morning and welcome to a new series that we're doing. We figured that we get a lot of opportunities to spend some time with friends' cars, uh, customers' cars, dealer cars and things like that, that I don't always get the opportunity to drive, but that I get the opportunity to experience. So today we are doing our first video of a new series which we're calling the Experience Series. So this series is purely going to be you coming along with us to experience different supercars. So every title will be the same, it will be like Experience the, in this case, Lamborghini Aventador SV. We did one with the Aventador S, but that was not the exact format we wanted, that was like a tryout thing. But every time we're with a new car, or a super exciting supercar now, and I'm in the passenger seat, and potentially sometimes when I'm driving as well we're going to do experience videos so to kick it off we've got the Lamborghini Aventador SV and I'm holding two things in my hand I'm holding in one hand the key and in the other hand the phone this particular car is a Lamborghini Aventador SV so model year 2016 and is in a beautiful color now we're going to walk you through the prices of the options and show you all the details about this car um, bit by bit. So I have the option list right here. This car is in Rosso Bia, which is the launch color actually for the SV. And that color, the paint alone, is 12,000 euros. Inside, it's got the Nero Cosmos with Rosso Alala interior, which is a 2,400 euro option. And on the outside, there are a bunch of different things. So in the front here, as you can tell, it's all gloss black. So that's no carbon fiber. And that comes as standard. The stripe as well, by the way, was an extra thing that the owner added afterwards, as well as the tint. So that is not an option from Lamborghini. That is just a wrap on the outside. We've got the wheels down here, which them, they cost 3,600 euros. There's also an option to have it painted in the middle here in red, as well as the brake calipers done in red as well. Those are 1,200 euros. If we come around the side, the SV comes with a lot of standard carbon around the back. So for example, it's got, um, it's not gloss carbon fiber, it's matte carbon fiber on the rear wing, on the side vents here, on the, um, on the air intake on the back right here. But then there is the option of also having the rear above the engine in carbon fiber. Now that costs, let me find it, 4,800 euros for that in, uh, carbon fiber. Rather pricey option. <laughs> I'm finding out that Aventador SVs are very expensive. This particular car, standard, is 410,000 euros. All options, like this one has, is about 450,000 euros. However, they've held their value nicely, and you would struggle to find one of these now for under 500,000 euros with low kilometers. If we come around the back of this car, now the SV obviously has a fixed rear wing, which is different to the normal Aventador, which has this cool design with the front um, sort of holding bits there, which is different to most uh, wings, which have them coming from underneath completely. It's got a whole new rear diffuser with carbon fiber down here, and then a completely different design for the uh, exhaust. So if you know the original Aventador exhaust, it's one exhaust there with the four little ones poking out. This is just all four coming out straight, not hidden or anything. Now then, when you come around this side, you can tell that there's more carbon fiber here on the intake, which is also on the other side as well, but we didn't show it to you. Another intake right here. And the paint, it's hard to describe just how much it glistens in the sunlight. It's absolutely gorgeous. 
And yeah, that is mainly the outside of this car. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the hood. This is the key right here. This is where I'll show you how to open the uh, engine bay. So it's behind the seat. You have here for the front bonnet right there, which we'll show you in a second. But behind the seats right here, you have a little latch, which you pull and it pops the engine bay. Now, if we open that, it is a flurry of carbon fiber in this car. So it's got the engine, uh, what they call is the engine, let me find it for you. Engine area and carbon fiber, which is 5,640 euros. This gets you all of the carbon you see here. So the cross, the sort of um, reinforcement braces in carbon fiber. And then it's also got the, now let me try and say this without messing up, Magneto rear logical suspension with rear springs in red. So these springs right here painted in red, that is 1,200 euros as well. So that it completes the whole interior. You can put your oil up in there and then you can basically see what's going on. And it is a massive V12 engine This naturally aspirated. So it makes an absolutely stunning noise. 750 horsepower propels this car way over 200 miles an hour and gets to, to 60 miles an hour in 2.8 seconds. So it's an absolute fighter jet beast this thing super super quick it does all of that through one of the most controversial things which is the single clutch gearbox now to talk more about all of that stuff we're going to pop to the inside check out the options and check out what you get when you pay your 450 grand for an event of the sv it's not the easiest car in the world to get into but it's definitely a lot easier than the lotus now then once you're inside you pull this strap which is an SV only thing. It's not like on the normal Aventadors and that's to save weight, kind of like what you see in GT Porsches. It's got a full carbon fiber door panel. That is actually standard for the SVs. Now this particular car has the Sensenum sound system. You get the choice of two different sound systems, the standard Lamborghini one and the Sensenum one. And now this one is about 3000 euros and Apparently it doesn't actually make a massive difference because the sound deadening in this car is so stripped out that you get a lot of rattling from the sound system. So potentially not necessarily worth it. You pay another couple thousand euros for a multifunction steering wheel. This one finished in Alcantara. And then the only other real big option that can make a big difference to the way it looks inside here are the sports seats. Now these are a no cost option. Um, in the Aventador SV. You can choose between the standard Aventador comfort seats or these, which are the much more hardcore bucket seats. Um, but as I said, it's, it's, you basically just choose. You don't have to pay for the option. Now it does have the branding pack. So right here, you get an SV logo. Now that is an option to have finished in red stitching as well as the Lamborghini logo up here. Now then, all of the carbon fiber you get inside is standard on SVs, not on normal Aventadors. So this whole center panel right here is in carbon fiber. Around the display up here is in carbon fiber as well. And then everything is finished with red stitching, Alcantara and leather. And it feels so quality, so solid. As you guys may know, Lamborghini was bought by Audi. So you do also have a bunch of Audi-ness in here. So that solid feeling, but also the entertainment system is the Audi MMI system. So around here, you can recognize some of the buttons to navigate through it. Um, and you just have a flurry of buttons. Right, so we're gonna start up here with all the buttons. Uh, Lamborghini features, you always have your window controls left and right in the center console right here. So those two you pull and that opens and closes the windows. You've then also got your lift system, which in this car is only a front lift. It doesn't lift the rear wheels like in McLaren's. It only lifts the front, but quite considerably and quite quickly. So that's a very effective button and one you use a lot. Traction control off, as simple as that. You just pull and hold that button and it'll switch your traction off. You then got your hazard lights right there. This one actually doesn't do anything. <laughs> and then you got your auto start stop to save petrol, which is a bit pointless. I think in a natural, naturally aspirated V12 because these things drink petrol like no other. Down here is where you start seeing the Audi um, similarities. So you've got the whole uh, air conditioning system, you've got your heating, and all of this is taken basically out of the higher class Audis. And then that also is continued here with all of the um, infotainment controls. You've got your navigation, info, car, setup, radio, media, name, and telephone settings. So those are just sort of fast buttons to get through different menus. And then you navigate using this little knob here, which you can press, and the four different corner setting buttons. So this is all pulled from Audi as well, but the Lamborghini part is right here. And this is where things get interesting. First of all, you got your start stop button. As long as you've got the key in the car, it's got keyless go, put your foot on the brake. There you go. And now it's started. So once it's started, you're automatically in strada mode. If you then put it into sport, this car doesn't actually have the sports exhaust setting. 
um, which came later after this car was released because this is a November 2016 car and then they released the sports exhaust. So when you've got the sports exhaust, once you have it in sport mode, it opens the valves and makes the car properly loud. Then we've also got Corsa, which just makes the gear shifts much more hardcore and uh, everything just sort of goes a bit crazy. Now then, talking of gear shifts, you've got these two huge paddles right here, which are connected to one of the most brutal single clutch gearboxes. This thing in Corsa just whacks you in the back of the head. It's like nothing I've really ever experienced. Uh, if you have in Strada, it's all right, but definitely outdated compared to any Lamborghini systems or any, uh, sorry, Ferrari systems, Porsche gearboxes, all those double clutch gearbox. And that's the main thing which the Aventador is missing in my opinion, but the reason they don't have a double clutch gearbox in this car is purely because it won't fit. Double clutch gearbox will not fit with the chassis design and everything of the Aventador, which is why the Aventador S does not have the double clutch gearbox. So we're limited to the single clutch. I think it adds to the character of this car and the brutal sort of side of it. But yeah, you've then also got buttons on the steering wheel. You've got a voice, uh, voice uh, record button so you can give voice instructions. You've got your volume button. You can flip through menus on your screen here, which we'll talk about in a second and a mode button. Now then, the screen here is very, very cool. It's uh, all done in this sort of race car aspect where you don't have a normal uh, rev, rev, rev counter. Revometer. Revometer, let's call it, no, rev counter. Um, you have this sort of race car display with, look, if I flick a paddle, you've got your gears right there. And then if you pull both, you go back into neutral. But so it's super clear, you know exactly what gear you're in, you know exactly what you're doing, your speed, is where is your speed down here down on the left you got your rpms as well in digital form and then a bit of information like the fact that your doors open your um, your petrol consumption how much petrol your range you've got left and all of the sort of uh, gauges on the left as well so it's pretty cool it's completely different to in the other aventadors the original ones had an analog system um, and the new Aventador S has a system a bit like this it is a screen where you can flick through different menus this whether you're in sport strada or corsa will always remain the same. Now then, there's, it'd be rude, I think, not to give this a couple of revs. So, above 3,000 RPM is when the valves open. And that's where you can properly hear this beast. I mean, it sounds unreal. Only 600 of these will ever be made. And uh, I figured that why not give you a video on one of them? The way to get out of this car once you're done is down here. This is a rather special feeling door handle. So you just pull it right there, clips the door open, and then it kind of opens automatically, not automatically, but you just really need to push it and it kind of goes up by itself. So it's really easy, light to push up. It's a bit heavy to pull back down, but to push up, it's really not challenging. And they kind of go out, not directly up like scissor doors, they go up at a slight angle but they look absolutely unbelievable. And uh, yeah, that is basically, apart from a few things like down here, for example, I don't know if you're gonna be able to film that, but this is where you put your CDs in, you got SD card readers, and you have a few more buttons on the door. So right here you have a lock, unlock setting, and then your uh, mirror controls right there as well. But apart from that, we've basically covered the whole inside and outside of the car. It's probably about time that we get driving. Oh yes, sorry, Ao is pointing at me to point up towards the ceiling. You've got a few little settings. You've got a light here. Uh, this is the light, uh, this button, you press it. And let me just switch this off so you can hear me better. When you press this button, it will mean that the lights will only switch on when the door is open. So you know when you've left the door open by accident or not. The uh, sun visors have a little mirror in them. No light, however, and they're absolutely tiny. But because of the angle of the front, um, uh, what do you call it? God, I've forgotten the name. The front. The hood? No, not the hood. No, um, but, 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 but windscreen, that's the word oh. I'm looking for. The front windscreen is at such an angle that uh, you don't really need a big sun visor. So it's like what I had actually on the Elise on the Exige, I have no sun visors. Mm. And yeah, and then up here you've also got this carbon effect leather with the red piping to go with the rest of the interior. This car also has, as an option, the carbon um, carpet, which normally you get these normal carpets, but these are in this sort of fin like rough finish with, in this case, slightly blue tinted carbon fiber and looks absolutely unbelievable. It doesn't have a glove box, this car, by the way, as well. No glove box. This right here for your phone is the only storage you have on the inside, as well as a couple uh, little sort of storage areas behind the seats. You have nothing you can open on the center console, and you just have a 12 volt outlet back here. But in terms of interior storage, you really don't have much. Anyways, I think it's probably about time uh, we take this thing out. 
and see what it feels like. Okay, we're cruising down. As you can tell, we're in second gear and it makes some insane pops. But you were saying up. Uh, like on the second gear, it's 39 kilometers per hour. And if you're on the third, it's like 55 kilometers okay, per hour. Okay, so certain speeds more than the actual RPM. It makes these deep pops like those that you can probably hear. And then when you're inside, you can tell these buttons light up, the sport mode lights up, and you've got this screen here which shows uh, all of the information you need to know which you collect uh, you sorry uh, control through this which is absolutely awesome and really feels like a spaceship now in here in the passenger side I'm staring at this initial bit of leather right here with the blacked out Lamborghini logo which actually is so cool and feels so solid and man it's crazy this view is so slanted the windscreen as I said earlier and you really feel like you're sitting on the ground with this these hard seats and this hard carpet you really feel like you're sat in a race car is absolutely awesome and that view out of the side is just uh well it's bloody beautiful isn't it whoa here we go then aventador sv first time driving an sv i've driven an aventador before i'm gonna crack the window this car is very low at the front so you do need to put the lift up whenever you go anywhere remotely close to uh a bump. Well, huge thanks to the owner, Ruslan, whose Instagram is going to be in the description down below for allowing me the opportunity to drive this car. Now then, the last Aventador I drove was a normal Aventador and they did change the gearbox setup a tiny bit compared to that car and genuinely in the first few meters you can feel that it is a lot smoother. Right now we're in Strada mode, so in the smoothest mode. But you can feel that the gearbox is so much less slow, I guess is the word that I'm, I'm going to give, and brutal than in the original Aventador. The suspension is very, very hard. It's fast, that's for sure. By no means is this a daily supercar. This is a hardcore, thoroughbred track. Proper Italian breed supercar bordering on hypercar in terms of presence and emotion. I'm gonna crack the window so you can hear the noise a tiny bit more. I mean, this is just an experience like no other. The Aventador is the epitome of what Lamborghini stands for. Yes, the gearbox could do with some improving. Yes, maybe it's a bit large, it's a bit heavy, and things like that, but. It goes with the character. I'll be the first to admit that this car could do with a dual clutch gearbox, but also I'll be the first to admit that the single clutch gearbox does complement the character of this car. And with this dashboard, which is giving you all sorts of information on your G's, on your speed, on your gear, it's just, oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. You know what it is? I drove the McLaren 720S and I left it thinking it lacked emotion and now when I think back to that drive of course I can't remember it but it doesn't bring a massive smile to my face. This is a drive I'm going to remember for years and every time I think about it it's going to bring a smile to my face and that's why we're Pedro heads, that's what it's all about. A car like this is meant to make you feel like this car is making me feel right now. Maybe it's not the most logical car for the money but Oh, it's, it's just beautiful and the no 
noise. The cracks. Oh. Oh, it's just every aspect of it. And there is a massive improvement in the gearbox. Yes, you are basically riding on a skateboard. I mean, the suspension is crazy hard. These seats for long journeys would not be very comfortable, but I don't care. I really don't care because I've got a naturally aspirated V12. I look insane on the road and it sounds, well, I mean, it would be a shame just describing it to you when uh, I can make you experience it. It sounds absolutely insane. Okay, launch control! Oh, that's the end of the video! Thanks for watching! Please remember to subscribe! I hope you enjoy this new series! Thank you to Ruslan! This has been unbelievable! Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you soon! Cheers! Oh, bye bye! Quick cap saying it, Saturday in the mouth! No Juliet!